What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about current news in Norway. Because as an American, I never get to see or hear about Norwegian news here in the United States from any of our news or media outlets, so today, I'd like to take some time to learn about the current news and events happening in Norway right now. Starting with, no signs of hacking after Telenor's network crashed. What is Telenor? And uh, is this a big deal? <laughs> and is Norway worried about being hacked? I have a lot of questions about this one. No signs of hacking after Telenor's network crashed. What exactly is Telenor? I don't think we have that here in the United States. It sounds like a company. Uh, Norway's dominant telecoms firm, Telenor, set up a crisis team during the long holiday weekend? Hundreds of thousands of customers were suddenly knocked offline? and couldn't communicate on Saturday. Oh my God, wait. This is a huge deal. This must have been huge news in Norway. See, this is why, this is why I enjoy looking at the Norwegian news, because I didn't hear anything about this over the weekend. I, I had no idea. So, if Telenor is the Norwegian telecom firm, and, uh, People were knocked offline and couldn't communicate. Are we talking about, like, cell phones, internet, computers? Like, Norwegians couldn't communicate at all? Like, what is this like a cell phone service or like an internet company? I'm, I'm not sure, but either way, this is a huge deal. This is like a safety issue. If you can't communicate, if you can't get online... That's a huge deal. How are you supposed to watch YouTube? <laughs> How? <laughs> this is really important things. Uh, but seriously, Telenor officials claim the problems have been fixed and they don't think hacking was behind them. Oh, oh, people in Norway were concerned that this was like a hack or something, that this was like a digital attack on Norway. Oh, wow. I don't, I mean... It's good that this wasn't a hack, but this is also very, very bad that this can even happen in Norway, right? The reason for the instability that some customers experienced was an error in a component in a central connection of our network. Uh, and also, it seems like every week when I look at Norwegian news, like, this isn't the first time that something has gone offline. I remember a few weeks ago, like, the train system in Norway was having problems. Now it's like the internet or telecommunications are offline in Norway. Even if it's a short amount of time, this seems like a, a very big deal to me. Like, especially when you're living now in the modern day, people really, really depend on access to the internet to do their job, to communicate to their family and friends for safety, you know? Um, Telenor officials are examining the sequence of events that made it impossible to send text messages or log on to the internet. <laughs> uh, I can't even imagine. I mean, if I'm being real, sometimes in the United States, your internet provider might lose connection for like an hour or two and everyone gets really upset. But I guess you could just go outside and use like your your wireless phone data and use like towers and satellites and stuff, right? Was, I'm not sure the extent of how bad this was, but this sounds bad. Kroken said the company also had its entire network under surveillance to ensure its stability. Hmm. I don't know, because <laughs> it wasn't working. He advised customers that were having problems to restart their routers or put their mobile phones into airplane mode and set them back to normal. 
So, ah, Norwegians were just having to do all sorts of crazy stuff to try to get their cell phones to work and to get connected to the internet. That's really unfortunate. That must have been like a huge problem this weekend. Oh my god. I can't even imagine. And that could really, really cause some problems. If you really needed access to your phone or internet during that time, that's a huge safety issue, actually. Wow. Okay, uh, next we have Norway's recognition of Palestine meant to prod a two-state solution. Okay, wow. So this, I'm glad that this is here today because this is actually big news in the United States. For once, finally, Norway has made a little bit of news here in the United States. I was hearing about this, but the, the only reason that this is news here in the United States is because this is seen as very, very controversial here in America. Very controversial. Um, but I did hear about this, which... It's rare for me to actually uh, see Norway in the news here. So this actually made it. Norway recognizing Palestine. And so it's meant to prod a two-state solution. It's been 75 years since Norway recognized the state of Israel. On Wednesday, the Norwegian government decided to also recognize Palestine as a means, according to the prime minister, of finally achieving the two-state solution he and many other countries believe is necessary for peace in the Middle East. Right, so a lot of Americans and people around the world have really, really big feelings about this. All sorts of opinions on this. Um, if, I'm, if I'm trying to understand the Norwegian point of view here, it is that Norway thinks that recognizing Palestine, officially, officially recognizing it, and treating it as its own independent sovereign nation, that this will achieve peace, that this is necessary to establish what will lead to peace and, like, constructive beginning to peace and a solution for uh, in the Middle East. And uh, obviously this is a very, very difficult situation, and no one seems to actually have an answer to it. So, if, if anything, I uh, admire that Norway, and I think a couple other countries in addition to Norway, Norway is trying to at least, like, propose something to happen, you know? Whereas it seems like, uh, as it seems right now, like, it could just be endless violence and war and conflict in that area, because um, nothing is written, no long-term solution seems to be on the table um, because both sides want things their way. And so Norway is like taking a pretty firm stance on this. Um, the Palestines have what Storr called a fundamental and independent right to their own state. Both, both Israelis and Palestinians have a right to live in peace in their own state. Wow. And, and Norway, or at least the prime minister of Norway says... There can't be peace in the Middle East without a two-state solution. Okay, yeah, this was big news in the United States because this is this. Some people agree with it here. Some people think this is very controversial. I'm interested in what Norwegians think about this. Do do most Norwegians agree with this as the official stance of Norway on this? Because this is a big deal. This is a big deal when uh, Norway came out and said this. Um, like I said. This made news in the United States. So, interesting stuff. There's long been broad support for a two-state solution in the Norwegian parliament. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty good. I'm not going to get too deep into that. I think I understand here. But yeah, yeah, uh, I had heard about that. And we also have tighter border control wins support. Tighter border control wins support. Oh, is this like, is this like the Russian border? I bet. I bet this has to do with the Norway-Russian Norway, Norway -Russian border. Norway's northern border to Russia will no longer offer a gateway for Russians keen on entering not just Norway, but the entire European economic area. 
oh, so Nor- uh, Russians would enter Norway as like a gate to the rest of Europe, basically? Is that is that right? So Norway is also taking, uh, Norway is just laying down the sta- their stances and opinions right now. Um, Norway is saying uh, the border to Russia will no longer, so is Norway not letting any Russians into Norway? Like, is the border shut down? How much are they shutting this down? Is it completely closed? I'm not sure. Norwegian border police will turn back Russian citizens who lack a necessary or important reason to enter Norway. Wow. So, wow. This directly has to do with the Russia-Ukraine war where Norway has been very, very clear and open about offering lots of important support uh, to Ukraine. It's been really cool to, to hear about, actually, how much support Norway has provided for Ukraine. And on the flip side, Norway is taking a, a more harsh stance against Russia by the sound of this. Um, and like I've said before, we don't really have that much of an opinion on all of this uh, as Americans because we're so far away. Like, it feels like Russia, Ukraine is on the other side of the world for me. It doesn't affect me. Um as cold as that sounds, but I think that's why a lot of Americans don't think about this very much. But this is very much a big, important topic in Norway, it's, it's, it, which is really interesting, like, how big of a difference that is. Here in America, like, we don't hear or think about this much anymore, especially as time has gone on. This is very much, like, cutting-edge news, important topic in Norway and a lot of Europe, places close to Russia and Ukraine for sure. So this is interesting for me to see from the Norwegian perspective. Norwegian, Norway, is not allowing Russians into Norway anymore, basically, unless you have a very, very important reason. This rule change will affect Russian tourists the most. Wow. The stricter border control is aimed at boosting security, and preventing Russian spies from traveling around Norway, taking photos, gathering information on Norwegian infrastructure. Wow. So this really, it's like pretty slowly escalating. Um, And I, I think in some of the news I read in the last few weeks, Norway is also beefing up its military and its defense budget and military spending. Um, Pretty much in response to Russia, Ukraine, pretty much. And now closing the border. Wow, wow, wow. Russia has become a more dangerous neighbor. Wow. So, tensions with Russia after invaded Ukraine two years ago present a dilemma uh, for people who are residents who have lived in peace with Russian neighbors for decades. Right, there's, there's probably, yeah, there's probably a lot of Russian people in Norway because they are so close. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Very interesting. I had not heard about this. Um, so basically, Russians are no longer welcome in Norway. Like, that's basically what it boils down to until this whole uh, conflict comes to an end or conclusion or something. Wow. Very interesting news. I also want to take a quick look at uh, news. When you Google Norway news here in the United States, this is some of the stuff you get. I think this will be interesting for Norwegians to see. When you Google Norway in the American news, uh, all of the articles are on Norway recognizing Palestine. Like the top three articles here are uh, are Nor- Spain, Norway recognizing Palestine, Spain, Ireland, Norway recognizing Palestine. So this really is top news in America. Um, and some of the other things we have, what? Um, Norway, Finland, and Poland to build a drone wall against Russia. A drone wall? Really? Like to shoot down drones? Like is Norway concerned about being actually attacked by Russia? Is that actually a concern? That's very scary. 
This is becoming very, very real, very quickly. A drone wall against Russia? Oh, activists sue Norway over deep sea mining. We've heard a little bit about that before. Um, Wout van Aert makes su successful comeback in Norway. Oh, th there's a tour of Norway. There's a bike race in Norway. The tour of Norway. I had no idea. <laughs> Norway's oil companies expect to spend $24 billion. Oh, my. Norway chess. Oh. Three draws, three Armageddon deciders. What? There's a Norway super chess tournament. This is kind of fun, just looking at the headlines for Norwegian news. Uh, it's very random. Very random. Um, Norway bans entry for Russians. That's news here, too. Norway sued over deep sea mining. We've kind of heard about that. Uh, looking for oil and people aren't happy about the, the deep sea mining plans in Norway. But uh, anyway, I thought it'd be interesting just to see when you Google Norway, what comes up. And uh, those are some of the headlines. It's mostly about the, the Norwegian announcement about uh, recognizing Palestine, actually. Big news. So, uh, yeah, I think with that, that's pretty much this week's uh, current news in Norway. I did really much enjoy this. Really, I mean, not all positive stuff, like a lot of conflict and war and distress going on, but I'm happy to be up to date on the Norwegian news. I do enjoy staying up to date. So anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of this Norwegian news here today. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and, and learning about Norway for the first time, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching. And see you next time.